the notion of the finality of prophethood has certain implications. It means, uh, and Muhammad Iqbal, a modern um, uh, writer, thinker, poet, my favorite, uh, died in 1938, a great man. I'll find some excuse to talk about him in one of the lectures. You wait and see. He, he said that this notion of the finality of prophethood means that man can no longer be tied to the apron strings of uh, ancient times now. It's not that he, man does not need and require divine guidance. Yes, he does. But now that has come to an end, and now human reason must come into play. And reason and faith uh, are like two horses, this is my analogy, by the way, that are to be yoked together, and they have to lead the wagon of humankind. Okay? So this puts the onus, burden, on... Um, uh, human beings now. They have to figure out in light of the divine dispensation they have received um, what kind of life they must live and what problems uh, they face and what solutions they must come up. And this probably gives rise in the eyes of some Muslim scholars to the inductive approach which is the basis of science. Uh, historians of science associate the rise of inductive science with Muslims. Greek science was deductive. It's Muslims who promoted uh, inductive uh, uh, science. If you read George Sarton and other historians, that's what they would say. And this has some connection with the notion of the finality of prophethood. Enough. You have all the guidance. Uh, it's like saying you've written your dissertation now, and now go and do research on your own. That always will be your basis. That always will provide you uh, with guidance. But now you are on your own. That is the message of the finality of prophethood. 